Hello students, today we are going to learn about palate. The term palate refers to the roof of the mouth. So, so here is a schematic sagittal view of uh, head and neck region where we can appreciate palate which is like a partition between nasal and oral cavities. And the palate consists of two parts, hard palate and soft palate. Hard palate which forms anterior 4 fifth of the palate and soft palate which forms the posterior 1 fifth of the palate. So the heart palate is the partition between the nasal and oral cavities. Its anterior two-third is formed by the palatine process of maxillae and posterior one-third by the horizontal plates of palatine bone. So till here it is formed by the palatine process of right and left maxillae and posterior part is formed by the palatine uh, shelves. These are from the palatine bones, horizontal plates of palatine bones. So here is the inferior surface of skull or base of the skull showing the heart palate. So these two are the palatine process of right and left maxillae. which makes anterior two-thirds of the heart palate and posterior uh, one-third is formed by the palatine horizontal plates of palatine bone. And anterolaterally we can see here the heart palate becomes continuous with the alveolar arches and gums. The posterior margin of the hard palate is free and provides attachment to the soft palate. Inferior surface of the hard palate presents features like incisive fossa which is a small pit anteriorly in the midline behind the incisor teeth and into which the openings of incisive canals are located and each incisive canal or a foramen uh, is right and left pierces the uh, corresponding site and ascend into the corresponding nasal cavity and incisive foramen transmits the terminal part of nasopalatine nerves and greater palatine vessels. So here is the incisive fossa. where right and left incisive canals are located. And through the incisive canals, uh, terminal parts of nasopalatine nerve and greater palatine vessels will pass through. Next, the greater palatine foramen on, uh, on one on each side is located. So, this large foramen here and here. And greater palatine foramen uh, which is present on the on either side of the heart palate, it transmits greater palatine nerves and vessels. Lesser palatine foramina, they are usually 1 to 3 in number on each side and are in the pyramidal process of the palatine bone. So here is the pyramidal process.
So lesser palate and foramina are usually located over the pyramidal process, usually two or three in number. And uh, they transmit lesser palatine nerves and vessels. So they provide passage to lesser palatine nerve and vessels. And posterior nasal spine is a conical projection in the median plane on sharp free border of posterior border of heart palate. So here is the posterior nasal spine. Then palatine crust is a curved ridge near the posterior border of the heart palate and masticatory mucosa is the mucosa membrane lining the heart palate and in the anterior part it is firmly united with the periosteum of multiple fibrous strands which are called as Sharpie's fibers. Hence moving bolus of the foot does not display the mucous membrane. These curved arches are the palatine crust. Palatine crust are the curved ridges which are present near the posterior border of the heart palate and the masticatory mucosa is the mucous membrane lining the heart palate and in the anterior part it is firmly united with the periosteum of the heart palate by fibers called as multiple fibrous strands which are called as Sharpie's fibers. Hence, moving for food or the bolus does not displace the mucous membrane. So, the heart palate uh, exhibits the transverse masticatory ridges which are transverse ridges present on either side of midline. Palatine raphe is a narrow ridge of mucous membrane extending antero posteriorly in the midline from a little papilla overlying the incisive fossa. So from the midline from here it extends and uh, this whole heart palate if you see it is lined by stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. So the mucous membrane is stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. Arterial supply the arterial supply to the heart palate is by greater palatine arteries from the third part of maxillary artery. So we can see the greater palatine artery which is exiting out through the greater palatine foramen. And greater palatine arteries they are the branches of the third part of maxillary artery. Each artery emerges from the greater palatine foramen and passes forwards around the palate lateral to the nerve to enter the incisive canal and pass upwards into the nose. So here we can see it is entered into the incisive canal, into the incisive fossa. Venous drainage, the veins of the heart palates drain into pterygoid venous plexus mainly and also drains into pharyngeal venous plexus. So we can see the greater palatine veins which are along with the greater palatine artery. And these veins finally drain into pterygoid venous plexus and pharyngeal venous plexus. Nerve supply of heart palate, it is supplied by greater palatine and nasopalatine nerves which are derived from pterygopalatine ganglion. So here is the lateral view of nasal cavity along with the palate. So we can see here, this is the pterygopalatine ganglion. So the descending branches are the greater palatine nerves and also nasal, nasopalatine nerves. So these nerves are derived from the pterygopalatine ganglion. Greater palatine nerve supplies the whole of the palate except the anterior part of heart palate behind the incisor teeth. 
So, just behind the incisor teeth where the area of premaxilla is present, only that part it is supplied by nasopalatine nerves. Lymphatic drainage of heart palate. The lymphatics from the palate drain mostly into upper deep cervical lymph nodes and few into retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes. Next moving on to soft palate. Soft palate is a mobile muscular flap which overhangs down from the posterior border of the heart palate into a pharyngeal cavity like a curtain or a vellum. It separates the nasopharynx from oropharynx. So here we can see soft palate. This is the heart palate. So we can see the soft palate overhanging uh, like a curtain or like a vellum into the oral cavity. It separates the nasopharynx from oropharynx. So here is the oropharynx. And the pharynx behind the nasal cavity is the nasopharynx. So, external features of the soft palate presents uh, anterior surface which is concave. So, this is the anterior surface. I am writing A over here. Anterior surface which is concave and it is marked by a median raphe. Posterior surface is convex and continuous with the floor of the nasal cavity. So, the dorsal surface is the posterior surface. I am writing P over here. And superior border is attached to the posterior border of the heart palate. So, here is the superior border which is continuous with the posterior border of heart palate. And inferior border is uh, free and it is it forms an anterior boundary of pharyngeal isthmus. That is the connection between naso and oropharynx is called pharyngeal isthmus. So, inferior border is free border which forms a boundary of oropharyngeal isthmus and it is like a small conical projection which appears to be like a small tongue like projection hanging down from its middle of uh, middle of the oral cavity called as uvula so we can see the inferior border which is in the midline forms a tongue like projection small conical projection which is called as uvula And on each side forms the base of the ovula. Two curved folds of mucous membrane extends laterally and downwards. So you can see the two mucosal foldings. This is the anterior fold. And the one which is behind is the posterior fold. So, in the sagittal view, we can appreciate still more better. Here is the anterior fold and this is the posterior fold. So, the anterior fold of the mucous membrane which is at the junction of oral and pharyngeal parts of the tongue. So, this is the oral part of the tongue and this is the pharyngeal part of the tongue. So, it is the junction between the oral and pharyngeal parts of the tongue called as palatoglossal fold. So, it is between the palate and the tongue. So, it is called as palatoglossal fold. Posterior fold merges with the inferior, inferiorly with the lateral wall of pharynx. So, this is the posterior fold which is called palatopharyngeal fold. and it merges with the lateral wall of the pharynx. So, the palatopharyngeal fold contains a muscle called palatopharyngeus muscle which forms the posterior boundary of tonsillar fossa. So, we can appreciate palatine tonsil here. So, anterior to the palatine tonsil, 
is the palato glossal fold posterior to the palatine tonsil or tonsillar fossa is the posterior uh, that is palato pharyngeal fold so let us understand the structure of soft palate the soft palate is a fold of mucous membrane enclosing five pairs of muscles which are skeletal muscles the upper surface of the soft palate which is a part of respiratory tract it is lined by pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium so here we can see pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium and we can appreciate the nuclei at different levels and we can see the cilia from its upper border so it is a, re a respiratory epithelium which is the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium the part that abuts on the passivant ridge or po posterior pharyngeal wall which is lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium so here we can see non stratified squamous Uh, keratinized epithelium the oral surface of the soft palate it is lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium the submucosa of uh, both the surfaces in the, uh, that is oral surface and nasal surface which which are plenty uh, around the uvula that mucus glands are plenty around the uvula and on the oral aspect of the soft palate the mucosa on the oral surface of the soft palate also contains some taste buds especially in children and also contains some lymphoid follicles now let us understand the muscles of soft palate we know there are five pairs of muscles tensor palati or tensor veli palatini muscle next is the levator palatini muscle so let us understand these muscles in the sagittal view the previous image was along the inferior aspect uh, so here we can see the so this is the auditory tube so here is the levator veli palatine palatoglossus muscle palatopharyngeus and musculus uvula and there is one more muscle called as tensor veli palatine and muscle which i had shown in the previous image all the muscles of the soft palate are extrinsic except the musculus uvula which is intrinsic so the origin insertion and the actions of the muscles are like uh, starting with the tensor palatine and muscle it is a thin triangular muscle and where it uh, gains its origin from the cartilaginous part of auditory tube so here we can see tensor palatine and muscle gaining its origin from the auditory tube and also uh, from the adjoining part of greater wing of sphenoid so we can appreciate greater wing of sphenoid here so after its origin the muscle descends converges to form a tendon uh, which hooks around the pterygoid hamulus so here this is the pterygoid hamulus and we can see the tendon winds around the pterygoid hamulus so after winding round then it expands to form a palatine aponeurosis for its attachment so this is the image where the hard palate 
the muscles of the soft palate are exposed and we can see the oropharyngeal isthmus here so it is taken in a cross section in the base of the skull at the level of oropharyngeal isthmus so the actions of tensor valley palate uh, tightens the soft palate and it helps in the opening of auditory tube next about the levator valley palatinian muscle levator valley palatinian it gains its origin from the medial aspect of the uh, cartilaginous end of uh, auditory tube and uh, also from the adjoining part of petrous part of temporal bone so this is the petrous part of temporal bone and here is the levator valley palatinian muscle and the muscle runs downwards uh, medially and spreads out into uh, to get inserted into palatine aponeurosis so we can see the muscle is spreading along with the palatinian aponeurosis and getting inserted into the soft palate so as the name suggests levator palatinian means it helps in the elevation of soft palate and closes the pharyngeal isthmus and helps the opening of auditory tube so it uh, closes the pharyngeal isthmus during deglutition next about the musculus uvulae musculus uvulae we know it is an intrinsic muscle it is a longitudinal muscular strip uh, one on the either side of the median plane within the palatine aponeurosis so it gains its origin from the posterior nasal spine and palatine aponeurosis so here we can see palatine aponeurosis and posterior nasal spine projection which provides origin to musculus uvulae and muscle inserts into the mucous membrane of uvulae so the muscle inserts into this mucous membrane of uvula and uvula pulls uh, forward and on its own side so action of the uvula is to pull the uvula forward on its own side next about the palatoglossus and palatopharyngeus muscle uh, palatoglossus it is uh, present on the oral surface of uh, palatine aponeurosis so it gains its origin from the oral surface of the palatine aponeurosis it descends down in the palatoglossal arch and it is inserted on the side of the tongue at the junction of uh, its oral and pharyngeal parts so this is the oral part and this is the pharyngeal part here it gets inserted this is palatoglossus muscle and action of palatoglossus it pulls the root of the tongue and approximates the palatoglossal uh, arch and closes the oropharyngeal isthmus so it pulls the tongue elevates the tongue upwards closing the oropharyngeal isthmus next about the palatopharyngeus muscle consists of two fasciculi which are separated by levator palati muscle so this is palatopharyngeus and uh, palatopharyngeus it gains its origin from and uh, from it has two fasciculus i said so anterior fasciculus gains its origin from the hard palate posterior border of the hard palate so here is the anterior fasciculus which is gaining from the posterior part of hard palate and posterior fasciculus from the palatine aponeurosis so this is the posterior fasciculus from the palatine aponeurosis and both merge to form palatopharyngeal arch which is inserted into the medial wall raphe of the pharynx so they get inserted into the they form the median raphe of pharynx pharyngeal wall they get inserted and action of palatopharyngeus it raises the walls and larynx during swallowing so let us understand the functions of uh, soft palate on the whole it separates the oropharynx from nasopharynx during swallowing or uh, that food does not enter into the nose and it isolates the oro oral cavity from the oropharynx during chewing so that the breathing is not affected and it helps to modify the quality of voice by varying the degree of closure of pharyngeal isthmus
and protects the damage of nasal mucosa during sneezing by appropriately uh, dividing and directing the blast of air through both nasal and oral cavities and prevents the entry of uh, sputum into the nose during coughing by directing it into the oral cavity. So, these are the functions of uh, soft palate and the muscles of soft palate. So, here we can understand again this is levator valley palatinine and this is palatopharynges and here is the palatoglossus and we can see the uvula overhanging. Clinical correlation, paralysis of soft palate, the paralysis of muscles of the soft palate due to the lesion of vagus nerve produces nasal regurgitation of fluids or nasal twang in the voice, flattening of palatal arch on the side of lesion and deviation of uvula to the opposite side of lesion. So, we can see uh, the uvula is deviated here. So, uvula is deviated to the opposite side of lesion. So, the lesion is on this side and this side is the normal side. So, because of the pull of normal muscle, it gets deviated to the normal side. So, these are about the paralysis of a soft palate and lesion to the vagus nerve. Blood supply of soft palate. Arterial supply is supplied by lesser palatine branches of maxillary artery. So, and also the palatine branches of ascending pharyngeal artery and ascending palatine branch of facial artery. So, here we can see lesser palatine branches. And we can see the ascending pharyngeal artery as well. And also it is supplied by palatine branches of uh, ascending palatine artery which is a branch of facial artery. Venous drainage, the venous blood from the palate is drained into pharyngeal plexus and pterygoid venous plexus. So, we can see the veins here which drains into pharyngeal plexus and pterygoid venous plexus. Lymphatic drainage of the soft palate, it is similar to that of hard palate where uh, it drains into retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes. So, here we can see posterior to the pharynx retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes in this second image. And also they drain into upper deep cervical lymph nodes. Nerve supply motor supply, all the muscles of soft palate are supplied by cranial root of accessory nerve via pharyngeal plexus except tensor palatine muscle which is supplied by nerve to medial pterygoid which is again a branch of mandibular nerve. So, except tensor palatine. So, tensor palatine alone is supplied by branch of mandibular nerve. Rest of all the muscles of the soft palate, they are all supplied by cranial root of accessory nerve. Sensory supply, general sensations from the palate are carried by lesser palatine nerves of maxillary div division of trigeminal nerve and also the pterygo via pterygopalatine ganglion. So, lesser palatine nerves, they are the branches of maxillary division via the pterygopalatine ganglion, they supply the soft palate and also the sensory supply is by glossopharyngeal nerve, ninth cranial nerve. Let us understand about the GAC's reflex. The GAC reflex is a protective reflex characterized by the elevation of uh, palate that is the soft palate and the contraction of pharyngeal muscles with the associated retching and gagging in response to the stimuli of mucous membrane of oropharynx. It occurs when the palate, tonsil, posterior part of the tongue or posterior pharyngeal wall are touched by unfamiliar objects such as swab or spatula etc. So, the efferent limb of the reflex is provided by glossopharyngeal nerve and efferent limb is by vagus nerve. 
so that is about gag reflex so this completes the clinical aspects and the normal anatomy of hard palate and soft palate thank you